Hey buddies, Potato McWhiskey here and welcome to Let's Play Civ 6 as Gaul. I think our objective for this episode is to start thinking about how we actually want to win the game. I feel like the Gaul can pretty much go for any victory type that they want to, but I feel like they're best suited for either a science or a diplomatic victory. You might think that you get tourism from your mines because they have a culture, but this actually does not give you tourism in the late game. It seems like it would logically, but that's because actually getting tourism from something that gives you culture, I believe it's actually a game rule that's associated with the improvement and mines don't have that game rule. Let's grab ourselves another workshop in Baggy. We'll use James of St. George in Rodamacos to get me some walls and then we'll send him down to Turvana. I'm loving how quickly I can get these cities online because I can chop out every hill that I want to and just Put a mine on it and have a much better tile. All right, we picked up exploration. That means we're going to want to switch over to Merchant Republic. We're not actually building any wonders, so I think I can pop out Corvi. Maybe I'll swap in colonization in case I want to go for more settlers. I'll take out equestrian orders and put in conscription as well to save a bit of cash. Golden Age wise, I think it might be cool to actually go for monumentality here. We have a decent amount of faith that we could spend on builders. I could also pick up some culture from my world wonders or some extra production from my encampments or some extra gold and science from my campus and commercial hubs respectively. I think I might plug, I might, might leave this out for now and eventually plug that in. And for now I'll plug in Merchant Confederation for a little bit of extra gold. And for the short term, I'm not really sure what I should plug in. Uh, maybe a few great scientist points might be useful. I could faith purchase a settler here in a few turns, but I think I'm going to focus up my faith on builders. It's just a more efficient way to use my faith, and it means I don't actually have to build any builders myself. Commercial hub finish in Radamacos, we'll grab the market, that'll give me access to a trade route. Let's settle the city over here, there we are, and we can immediately improve this niter, which gives this city an amazing tile and will allow us to instantaneously place our oppidum for plus four adjacency, and that'll take about 16 turns to build, and that'll, you know, accelerate the city incredibly quickly. Bibrax has finished its workshop, I think I'll go for the aqueduct here. City is lacking a little bit in the housing department. Lysio is struggling a little bit to find things to do. It will grow in seven turns and I'll be able to place another district. The real question is, do I want another district in here? And maybe are there any tiles I can improve? And the city is mostly working improved tiles. I could maybe justify another mine once the city does grow. But for now, I think what I'll do is I'll buy a builder in here specifically to go improve that mine. And then I might just work a campus or industrial zone research project. And I feel like the campus research project gives me a bit more value. I'm a little bit behind in science. Maybe I could also build a unit or actually I could also build a settler. I just settle even more cities. If I, if I get the city to seven population, what am I building in here? is the real question, and I'm actually not sure. So I reckon a settler will uh, will be the right move here. Eight turns is a pretty quick settler considering it's 320 production. Now my capital, I would like to get my intelligence agency because that'll give me access to spies and make my spies better, which is really, really good for any sort of peaceful game where you're not planning to go to war. And I can use them to steal technology and all that sorts of jazz. It's actually a very nice spot for a farm triangle here. So let me go ahead and put down a pin to remind myself but this in fact will be a farm triangle. Pop down another mine here, giving me even more potential adjacency on this oppidum. And then when I get this iron online and this hill online, this will be, I think it's a plus six oppidum, which is pretty insane. Especially when you consider that I'm making my way towards guilds and that'll give me 100% industrial zone adjacency bonuses. A lot of strategic resources around here. I need to kind of choose carefully where I plan to settle. Is some really, really good oppidums, but I don't think it's worth it to settle for all of this land. I think I want to settle on one of these three tiles, and I feel like right here is my best shot because it's going to give me the ability to aqueduct over here. So we'll go ahead and pop that city right here. Although I don't have to settle that particular city. I could look for a better one, maybe like a coastal city, maybe on gypsum. Eh, honestly, this is probably my best choice in the short term. Pop some walls into Turvana, and now I'm incredibly well defended on my southern border. Pretty much nobody is going to be able to stop me and attack me. Um, I have so many city shots. I have so much city combat strength. I can get um, crossbowmen really easily. I'm feeling very, very secure. Settle this city right here. Now, I know it says I should settle there, but I actually think this is better. Uh, because it'll leave me within range of potentially a really good campus or something like that. Although that said... I would want to be in range of this campus spot, if anything, so I should really settle one tile down 
which I'm not a huge fan of, but I think it is technically better. Even if I don't get fresh water, I could put maybe some farm triangles in this area to kind of crawl, sort of claw that back. Just look at this city. It was only settled a handful of turns ago. It took me one, two, three, four turns ago. It already has an optimum built. It's making 11 production per turn. It's still on one population. The city is absurdly powerful at this point in the game. Whenever I see aqueduct graphics that look like this, I kind of feel like it's um, like a monorail connecting to two cities. Is that the way you guys think of this? Like I just imagine there's like a little tunnel going through the mountain and it's like a, a log flume or something that people like use to transport themselves. We do have a plus four entertainment, sorry, uh, culture district in Bibrax, which might be worth it because it's a lot of culture, although I'm already making a lot of culture. But that said, I don't have a very good campus in this city either. So maybe a high adjacency culture district would do the job. Yeah, I think this is a reasonable decision. So I'm going to pop that down right there. Here is a fun little thing to do with culture bombs. If I were to improve this nighter right now, it wouldn't claim both of these tiles because nighter, this nighter is owned by Baggy. If I come in here and I switch that to be owned by Duro Coteron, and then improve the nighter, it will culture bomb because culture bombing is based on the owning city and you cannot culture bomb further than three tiles from your city. And then I can just give that tile back so the city can continue to work it. I'm going to put all my points into doubling the acquisition of great engineers because I really don't want to get them banned. Ah, uh, that really sucks. So 30 turns of getting no great engineer points. I really am unhappy with this. Looks like every single AI voted for it. And I think the, how the AI makes the decision is like who, like they, they basically say, what am I not making any points of? And is there someone who's making them more than me? And they basically say, right, I'm just going to prevent you from getting any more. I can still use faith and gold to get this guy. So I will go ahead and use my faith to have Isidore because it will be helpful to have him in reserve. Workshop completed in baggy. I think I'm going to maybe get my campus in here. And uh, there's a plus three campus right there. I think that's a pretty nice spot for one. Lovely. We just picked up gunpowder, which is going to give our quarry improvements plus one production. Probably one of the few sieves where I would say you want to keep all of your stones around because they actually turn into very nice tiles and give great adjacency on your oppidums. Trying to think about what our next direction is. I definitely feel like going for industrialization is a really good move. But I might be able to pick up something like the Forbidden City because I just have so much production that it seems possible. Lovely. We finished the intelligence agency in the capital and we can now start spying on someone. I think the Congo has the most science, so it makes sense to try and spy on them. I'll be going over to Quango and see if I can't do tech stealing over there. I'm actually a bit surprised they have so much science. I guess they must have a bunch of cities in the fog of war that I can't see. But with the intelligence agency finished, we can go back to settling. And nicely enough here in Lycia, we are one turn away from finishing the settler and we just hit seven population, which means we can place down another district. I'm really not sure what district I want to place, though. Um, I have kind of OK options. It might be OK to go for another encampment in here. Trying to think encampments are good because they give you um, production. They give you housing, access to great generals, which can be useful throughout the game. I could also just pop down an entertainment district to keep this city happier. And they are half price right now because I haven't built many of them. So throwing down a couple of entertainment complexes wouldn't be a bad move, especially with how big my empire is getting. And many of these are going to become a bigger and bigger problem. I mean, sure, right now the city is eating two amenities from my luxuries and two from entertainment. And I could bring this up to four, which means that basically frees up two amenities to go to a different city. So entertainment complex it is because amenities are a pretty big deal these days. And the really nice thing is once you hit seven population and actually place the district, you could just go back to finishing the settler, which will knock the city down below the seven population threshold and still build your district. This city is making 36 production per turn and finishes a library in two turns. I, re I you know what? I really love this civilization. It's a, it's a very, very fun civilization. You can actually build things in a reasonable amount of time. I swear to God, there was a barb camp up here somewhere. I've been searching for it for a while now and I keep just like running into nothing like Barbs came from here to attack me. Where is this encampment? Plus three error score for finishing our first data square with three or higher adjacency. Not that that's really going to help. I'm already heading into a dark age here. And I think this is actually going to be my very first dark age in the dramatic ages mode. So I'm curious to see how it all pans out. Might be a good idea to actually have a few units prepared in case I, uh, I need to retake cities. So I'm going to go ahead and produce a catapult. Aha, we finally found the barbarians right here. We just unlocked guilds, which is going to mean I want to plug in craftsmen. I think I'll pop out inspiration 
and go ahead and slap in craftsman there is something to be said for free inquiry to get an extra chunk of science and gold i'm curious is that worth more um than monumentality and you know what i'll do actually before i do this i might just go through and kind of cheekily buy a builder uh to spend my faith and then since i don't make that much faith i'll happily plug in free inquiry for extra gold and science and then craftsman for the extra production in my empire and I could go for retainers here, although I do want to keep conscription. Gold is very, very important to me. In terms of where we go next, I think diplomatic service is always a no-brainer choice because it gives you access to another spy. I want to build a campus in Avaricum, so I'm going to go ahead and chop here and slap down that plus three campus in that location. Delicious plus three, which you never really, in my opinion, want to build a campus that's lower than plus three. I've done it a couple of times here, but I, I can eventually improve that to plus three by improving this mine, for example. Um, and also the monumentality card in this uh, Dramatic Ages mode actually gives your settlers plus two movement, which is really cool for actually settling your lands. I just hope Germany isn't into like an excessive golden age because that'll make my life very difficult. Like, this is a very rare site for me to see. Um, I have a city that's completely finished everything it's supposed to do. It, it has it has nothing to build, um, which is, you know, very, very rare. And so I kind of have a choice here. Do I get a builder and continue to improve these Petra mines to make them even better? Uh, so I don't have to work these ones, for example. Do I produce military units? Do I produce builders? Do I produce settlers? And I think I'm going to do a mixture of all that. I think I'm going to go like builder, trader, settler in here although maybe it's better to go settler first because that has the highest return on investment than maybe trader builder although i could just buy my traders although i want to save my gold so yeah i'll go like settler trader builder no my poor little spearman just got murked oh that's unfortunate i was hoping to keep him alive but he alas he is now dead I'll grab a library in here as well two turning libraries feels really really good i have a catapult and maybe I would also like, I'd like just a mixture of units, like a horseman, I'm, I'm building a knight, maybe I want a swordsman, I have a crossbowman, just like a, a sort of a splash and dash of a bunch of different units feels nice to me. And I feel like this is the ideal location for this city. It has a farm triangle right here, which uh, means the city will be able to grow efficiently. It can, if it wants to, put a aqueduct here, although it doesn't have to because it's already on fresh water, has access to a really, really good campus. And a really, really good Oppidum. At least plus four. Could be plus five if I improve those mines. So I think this is a pretty solid spot. It has like a good mixture of food and potential production. So I like this spot. And it's also, it's, it's like right on the edge of my empire, which is always a plus, right? Easily defendable territory. Always, always, always a nice thing. Now, speaking of loyalty problems next era, I think I'm going to go ahead and promote Victor with um, Garrison Commander because that's plus four loyalty per turn towards my civilization for my other cities. Um, that will basically mean if I plop him somewhere like Lysu, he'll provide that benefit to a bunch of cities and um, that might help out a bit. Just harvested bananas in my capital to force the city up to 10 population, which means I can place another district. And I do kind of want the Diplo Quarter. It's a nice, it's a nice district. Um... It would make my trade routes, and I am planning to mostly do internal trade this game. It'll make my trade routes to my capital even better. So I'm going to go ahead and just throw it down somewhere that it isn't in the way. Yeah, I think right here is fine. We'll, we'll just pop it down on that rainforest. I don't care about chopping the rainforest that much. Beautiful. I actually chopped here and instantaneously finished the Diplo Quarter. Um, and I think, do I want to build the consulate? It does give me plus two influence points per turn, which means I get my envoys a little bit quicker. And speaking of envoys, I should really make friends with somebody um, like Venice or something. Yeah, okay. Is that what I want to do? Do they have a mission for me? Send a trade route to Venice. You're kind of far away, to be honest, to be able to get me a, to get a trade route over to you. Uh, what are we better off maybe making friends with the Vatican? What is siege tactics? You want me to build two bombards? That might not happen. I, I guess I just hold on to my envoys. I could build Chichen Itza in 20 turns, which could be interesting. It could be very interesting, depending on what I want to do. If I were to keep these, although I kind of want to chop out jungle and put other things on them. Although I guess I could technically keep them. And since I'm going for an entertainment complex in here, that'll give me access to the zoo, which gives plus one science to each rainforest and marsh tile. It also means I could, for example, go for the biosphere in this city. Although that has its own like weird rules and it doesn't actually improve it. Hmm. 
Yeah, I don't know. Do I want to go for the Chichen Itza or do I just want to harvest out these tiles? I think I might just harvest out these tiles, but I should really be thinking about where I'm going to get my Ruhr Valley because I haven't really planned for that. I, I should have maybe thought about that in my capital because that would have been a significant boost to my production, but it's not that big of a deal. I think we'll grab ourselves another crossbowman in the end. Let's go ahead and gain sources in the, uh, the Quango and then we'll start stealing signs from them. They are building the Patala Palace, actually, so that one's going to be not for me. I feel like Tervana could use a builder. It's working quite a few unimproved tiles, so let's uh, let's get that squared away. I also need to find time to build a trader in one of my cities. And, oh, I, I think I had one turn away from the trader in here. Perfect. So I'll get the trader and then the library. Still can't get over how nice the culture bomb is. Like, every, like I know I've talked about it a bunch of times, but it, it still just still feels amazingly nice, the culture bomb. Like, I just, like, slapped down my oppidum right there. We'll build those quarries in a little bit and get the advantage of them. Uh-oh. There is the Dark Age. The world has entered the Renaissance era. I am in a Dark Age. Each of your citizens exert 0.597 loyalty pressure in their cities. Pressure also affects other cities in the but 10% less effective. Some of your cities may have rebelled, becoming free cities with increased loyalty pressure. Be careful you may lose other nearby cities if you don't handle them. Oh, Jesus Christ. So musketmen. I have to deal with musketmen. That's really bad. That's um, that's absurdly bad. Even this brand new city I just settled went independent. Okay, I need to like start producing a military immediately. I will assign you to Tervana. And immediately begin researching bombards. Oh god. This is really bad. I'm going to purchase a crossbow. Yikes. Uh, this is bad. Especially if Germany decides to swoop in here. I need to like retreat. And, and save my units. Oh, I can upgrade this crossbow. And that'll boost metal casting. And we'll cancel whatever we're doing in here. And immediately get ourselves another catapult. Oof. Okay, I wasn't expecting it to be this bad. This is rough. Th four of three of my best cities have just been yeeted. Um, in fact, that's um, that's really tough. Okay, so we're gonna have to we're gonna have to change gears here a little bit, and uh, <laughs> I'm taking it back. I don't know what to do. Musketman, yes, musketman, get me musketman. The good thing is we do have insane production, so we can we can we can recover from this without too much trouble. Now that we have diplomatic service as well, um, I think I'm gonna head towards nationalism maybe. I wouldn't normally do this in a game like this, but I kind of dem demands it at the time. Ooh, okay, 50% production in your capital, but all your governors are neutralized and cannot be reestablished. 100% combat experience for all units, but plus one gold maintenance to each combat unit. Inquisition, isolationism. I don't think any of these cards are like really great for me right now, except maybe elite forces. I might just be better off plugging in something like feudal contract so I can spam out units a little bit quicker. Oof, this is big oof right here. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how we're going to survive this, but we'll do our best. I was not expecting it to be this bad. I'm still dealing with barbs up here to the north as well. I don't know, maybe I'll bring some of these units back. But yeah, we should be able to recover, I think. We'll see. We'll see. And a catastrophic eruption in my capital. This is the worst time for this to happen. <laughs> I don't need this right now. Don't you see that I'm already dealing with a massive problem? Um, I think shooting the city is the right move here because we need to we need to bring that down a little bit quicker. Yeah, I cannot let this rebel to Germany. Um, absolutely not. Let's talk to Germany and get open borders with them. I can under no circumstances allow this city to flip to Germany. Let's grab Amani and see if we can get Emissary as well. I can't even justify spending my money up here, so I'm just going to have to spend my time building crap. Jesus, the loyalty pressure that these cities exert is insane. Look at this. Oof. Ah, uh, yeah, we need to... We need to work hard to save this game. Do I pillage my own science here to get my bombards quicker? I think I do, because that shaves three turns off that. Which, and, and every turn counts when it comes to retaking Bibrax in particular. Let's go ahead and shoot this musketman. I need him to be dead because I can't let him pillage my entertainment complex. I could also work bread and circuses here to try to force Bibrax to flip to me. We'll see if that works. 
Um, but for right now, I just need to, I need to sacrifice a horse to kill that, unfortunately. I can't let him get pillages off. I have a catapult. I can upgrade you into a musketman for 370 gold. I think that's worth it. I have a couple of musketmen now. I think the big thing will be to save my nighter for bombards over the next few turns. Now I think it will be good to maybe spend my iron and horses. So I'll grab myself some knights. They'll be helpful in running around and doing what I need. This is some big oof territory. I think we make friends with Venice here a little bit. Just get that extra little chunk of gold that we're struggling to meet. Well, maybe I could do another two. and Maybe that'll give me a little bit more in the future. It'll kind of set that up for me. Chop out this crossbowman for sure. It needs to happen. All right, so we lost our horsemen, but that's okay. Let's keep bombing this city. I'm curious to see if I do bread and circuses, will that mean that this city flips to me? Because the incoming pressure from Germany is 53.3. This would give me 0 0.5 pressure per citizen. So that's only an extra 5. 10% less per tile. And no, we'll let it run for a turn to see if it makes a difference. I don't think it will, unfortunately. I just hope he doesn't get that pillage off. It would be very, very annoying. Need to get this catapult into position in this tile so we can start clearing this out. Oh my god, I don't even know what to do with myself here. I'm like looking at my cities in confusion. Dazed and confused. This like this this is actually this feels like being at war. This is like worse though because I've I've actually already lost half my empire. <laughs> oh god. Um this is tough. This is tough stuff right here. Um I'm gonna clear out these barbs because this just needs to go. Alright, so he's just attacking, that's fine. We'll get rid of him. We'll continue to bombard the city. This, at least this city will be relatively easy to retake. Um that's nice. Eight turns. Germany's exerting so much loyalty pressure here. I don't think even running bread and circuses matters. So I will... I'll just get more musketmen. The cities only have medieval walls. So a siege tower with musketmen could be, could be a way of doing things. Yeah, let's go ahead and upgrade that siege tower. Oh no, I can't build musketmen. I need the, I need the niter. Shoot, I just spent the 20 niter I need for my bombards. I was thinking that I had a massive surplus because I have so many, I had so many niter tiles like ready to get set up. Like there's a niter here, niter here, niter here. So I was thinking, oh, I have loads of niter, but I actually only have a little bit per turn. I'm hoping that the cancellation of that unit. Okay, so canceling it. Yeah, yeah. So I still have my niter. Brilliant. Well, that's, that's a good little thing to know. If you accidentally spend your niter um, and then don't put any investment into the unit, you can cancel the sort of investment by switching to a new unit. Right, we've got bombards now and humanism. Um, I think the big thing is this horseman just appeared out of the fog of war. Um, we'll get rid of him. Is an easy kill. Which bombard do I want to upgrade? I don't have enough gold, so that is moot. How do I get more gold? I think it's going to be through diplomacy, Canada. Yeah, we'll sell off like a hundred diplo favor here. Um, just to keep our economy afloat. So I think that's like 500 gold plus, you know, 35 gold per turn. 38 gold per turn. Perfect. So that extra chunk of gold means I'll be able to get my bombard. I think I I think I can retake Lysio in my own time. But Bibrax is kind of the pressure point. So I'm going to upgrade this catapult because I have a limited amount of niter. I could plug in the card that makes... 50% resource discount on units and I could also plug in the 50% gold discount which would make my life easier. I'm going to pop out colonization because I don't plan to be building settlers right now and then increase conscription and then this I feel like is a better way to deal with this and now I can upgrade both of these bombards and then in theory these will do a lot more damage next turn. What's our next step? I really do feel like it would be good to have industrialization. So I might head down that pathway, especially because I haven't picked up celestial navigation yet for harbors. I also really want my chancery for the extra influence points per turn. That would bring me up to 10, which means every 15 turns I would get two envoys, which feels really, really nice to me. Um, unfortunately, man, I'm really, really struggling here to... I'm actually genuinely having a hard time. Um, I'm, I'm a bit surprised. I'm, I, I like it in a sort of... Sick and twisted way. I'm I'm kind of excited that I'm I'm struggling a bit. My life is a little bit harder than it should be. All right, we have a night here. Campus research projects, encampment training. Am I close to a great general? I think doing encampment training could be okay. It would give me gold. It would give me this. Do I focus on my economy? I feel like I should be able to retake these. Avaricum and 
Logdunan might be a little bit more difficult. I'm really annoyed that these automatically upgraded to... Or, or they're, they're trying to build medieval walls in here. Now, we'll take some city shots from these guys, which, you know, is far from ideal. But it should be totally fine. Shrine, holy site, Lavra. Okay, we'll grab that. Now, the bombard should do a lot of damage to this city. Um, we'll bring this bombard forward. We're continuing to just chunk away at these cities very, very gently. We don't want to damage our infrastructure too much. I didn't mind pillaging that thing over here because it was like going to get me bombards. But we want to try to preserve our infrastructure, like I was saying. If we can use the siege tower on Bibrax, it might just really save, save the day for me because I only have six more turns to recapture it. Kind of tempted to build Taj Mahal this game. And I might even use... I might even use Isidore to get that because what Taj Mahal does is it gives you plus one error score from historic moments earned after this wonder is completed if it is normally worth two or more. And that will just make this whole game mode a little bit easier. So I think Taj Mahal is, is going up to be a tier one wonder in uh, Dramatic Ages. All right, let's begin the siege of Bibrax. Is the siege tower going to make a difference? Yeah, it's going to let me do significant damage directly to the city. Which is exactly what we're looking for. We're also going to hammer Lysiu. We'll pull this builder back. We'll move you forward. I think things are kind of coming up okay for me. Okay, we're recovering. I'm worried about these horsemen running around though. Because I have I have like neutral units. Or, or units hiding in neutral territory rather. Although it should actually be fine to pillage like my pastures and stuff like that. And mines. Because they, they should be really, really easy to repair. I just don't want to uh, I just don't want to pillage districts. So I might even like go for a few pillages because if I can use the money to sort of rebuild my empire then I'm in great shape. I right, use the city bombard on that horseman. We will shoot the city again with our regular bombard. Um, we'll bring a knight around to prevent the city from healing. Crossbowman will do even more damage. I would love another knight if I could maybe run down and just start getting a few pillages. Like I know it sounds crazy to pillage your own land but honestly it actually has a decent payoff here. Like, those, those are worth a lot of gold to pillage. All right, we're retaking Lysio. Good, nice. We have a builder on standby to repair these tiles anyway. So, it's like, it's not like a permanent damage. You know, it's just like a temporary setback. Let's use Isidore to build the Taj Mahal. Shave about 10 turns off at each time. So, we'll bring that down to a more reasonable build. And it might be a good idea to pick up castles here for Coursers lovely any chance i could sneak in another pillage maybe i don't think i'm going to be able to um, the city flips in three turns and i don't want to risk it so we're just going to retake it make sure we get a little bit of experience on our range units and then we'll use our uh, musketman to finish the city off perfect so loyalty in here is a problem i'm gonna go ahead and reassign amani down to bibrax that'll mean that loyalty is no longer a problem Oh, it looks like Movember has captured Hamburg, so I could add a proposal. Yeah, are you at war with each other is my question. I don't like that they're at war with each other. So I think I will actually go ahead and submit this topic of discussion. Oh, that's right. I can't build harbors adjacent to my city center. Oh, that sucks. I mean, I could still get good harbors from the mines on coast, but it's a little bit worse than I'd hope. I still think it's worth it to build harbors, though, in, in cities like this. Specifically for the trade route and the growth. Definitely, definitely not a coastal save, though. Um, I've now just realized. All right, let's go ahead and retake uh, Lisieux as well. Yoink. I've lost a lot of pop in these cities, which really, really sucks. And we're going to have to reassign Victor to one of the cities like so. The city's just gonna have to deal with negative loyalty until we can get another another governor title. Oh my god, go away. Just leave me alone. Just get out of my face, you goddamn barbarian scout. We'll get the monument and the granary in here to get the city regrowing. Uh, yeah, this is actually a big hurt to hit to my population, so pretty significant setbacks. Especially because these cities are now on like half loyalty. So they're taking a 50% yield penalty so they're only getting half their normal production and a quarter of their normal growth yikers that is a big big penalty 
yeah, the dramatic ages, it, it sure is dramatic. Like, let me tell you, um, I don't feel, <laughs> I don't feel so good right now. Although I might, uh, the city's going to build its walls. Well, you have to start the sort of counter crusade. Although I can't build my, bring my builder back. And I might be able to actually liberate Vilnius, which is interesting. Oh my God, they've actually just been producing more and more units over there. Oof. Oof. Germany has actually zero military, which is probably a mistake. I did see them, they had one cavalry unit running around, so they probably just didn't update. I'm going to vote this up, and this will be a military emergency against Movemba. He has a massive military, and do I really want to be in a military emergency with someone on my border right now? I mean, you know what? It, embrace chaos, okay? Chaos is a ladder, we're climbing it. Oh, well. Uh, he voted it down six times. Never mind. I guess other people didn't agree with this war. I am mildly annoyed that the walls that I built in this city have just been yeeted. Um, I'm pretty sure I built walls in this city and now they're just gone. Same with Bibrax. I don't like that that deletes your walls. That's um, not a fan of that. Don't like that. Whatever that is, not a fan. All right, we have to deal with a swarm of musketmen right now. We'll uh, upgrade this courser. Start trying to get units to move up to the front line as well. I'm also sending some knights up around to the north to see if we can't snipe out uh, Lugudunan before it before it actually finishes its walls. Oh my god. They do so much damage. It's actually pretty yikes for me right now. Um, although I can actually get some kills here with a little bit of help from my friends. We'll use the courser on you. I kind of wish I had roads now running through my empire because it's really, really hard to get through this terrain. But we are slowly pushing back and recapturing this city. I don't need you. Go away, barbarian skirmisher. Oh my god. I have to like bring back now this, this like <laughs> snow crusade that I sent like 40 turns ago to come back and try to chase down wherever this barbarian's coming from. Wasn't I supposed to be just peacefully settling cities this, this era? Like, it wasn't that my plan? Oh, I feel like I've been... <laughs> I feel like I've been very, uh, I feel like I'm being trolled by the game a little bit here. Do I want more bombards? I don't think bombards are what I need. I think I could use a little bit of science, so I'll do a campus research grant. Brilliant. Our spy has stolen the technology of sanitation from the Congo, which kind of gives us an idea of how far ahead technologically they are. We will keep stealing tech from the Congo, although I would like to get a level up. I think I'll go for rocket scientists because that could be useful in the late game to prevent space victories. Our cavalry are finally starting to arrive over to Lug Lugudunan. And uh, we are finally also starting to clear out some of this uh, musketman stuff. So we should be able to retake this city. I'm hopeful that we'll be able to retake this quickly. And then we just need to get um, our bombards in range of this one. And we're in a okay position. Feeling pretty good about this. I feel like I've handled this very well, this um, this Dark Age. I can imagine, though, if a couple of more cities had rebelled, this would have been real bad news for me. Also, I want to point out that I'm getting seven food and four production from my internal trade routes to my capital, which is really, really helpful in getting brand new cities to accelerate incredibly quickly. I put one in uh, all of the newly settled cities and they're already up to like huge amounts of population. They're making incredible production already. And uh, it's, it's super, super helpful to set up a city as a destination for your trade routes if you're not doing international trade. A little bit of optimization. Make sure you put your government plaza and your diplomatic quarter in those cities, uh, the city that you want to be the destination. And you'll end up with really, really good production. I do want to get a commercial hub in here eventually. Um, but that's sort of a long-term goal. I also want to grab Filippo Brunelleschi if I can. But I don't think I'm going to be able to get any points until this goddamn World Congress has another session. Right, let's clear out that musketman. We'll retreat our crossbows and get the bombards moving forward alongside the musketman. I think those are going to be our main units to actually take this city. Oh, there, of course, there's a horseman there to make my life more difficult. Well, I took down half the city's health in just three attacks, so I have a good feeling about this. Although I might lose my courser to this musketman. Let's go ahead and steal the tech boost for astronomy from the Congo. It's not a massive amount of science to steal, but every little bit of science that we can get kind of makes up for the fact that we're quite a bit behind right now. All right, what is this horseman going to do? Yep. Yeah attack the guy there and I did in fact lose a unit I'm fine with that 
but I do want to make sure I recapture this city. So let's just throw everything we have at it. Not quite enough. Oh, we did. We got it right. We've recaptured this city. We'll keep it. Loyalty will be a problem until we recapture Avaricum. Let's get rid of that horseman. We'll bring you forward, bring you forward. And have all of these guys in good position. So should be able to start bombarding it next turn. I should also maybe consider going down here with uh, any spare cavalry I have to uh, retake Wilnius. And I think I have a couple of knights that I could use for that and some coursers. And if I can liberate it, it'd be a nice bit of uh, era score and all that sort of jazz. First shots on the city this turn. We have a musketman with a thingy. I misclicked there. Oops. Uh, we could do a significant amount of damage to the city, but I don't want a unit to spawn and like cause me issues. So we're going to play it safe. Um, I definitely need a governor in here. I think I can reassign a Mani safely to hold on to that. Yep. Looks like we're doing just fine. I don't think I need ballistics, so I can safely come back here and start filling out my tech tree with things like maybe going for universities, heading up towards industrialization. I think we've got this under control now. At least, uh, you know, famous last words. Oh nice, I had no idea China was in this game, and wow, they are all the way over there. Wait, no, that's that's the Incas. Didn't I exchange information about China's capital? Where are they? Oh, there they are. They're all the way over here. Right, I think I need to promote this bombard. It's a little bit too scary at its current health. The city is now under siege. We're going to play it safe. We also we have nationalism now, so we can start combining units together if we want. What I'll do here is I'll promote you with that. And then move you in for uh, potential surrounds. My cavalry heading down south as well to try and reinforce that. I might start combining units together to uh, to thin my army out a little bit. I think that makes reasonable amounts of sense. Like for example here, now I just have one less unit. I get a little bit of error score. This courser could probably come down and help with this city. Uh, maybe I'll go ahead and grab this guy as well. Combine them together. Now nationalism is finished. I think we'll go for civil engineering next for that extra governor title. And I'm going to go ahead and promote Amani with... Um, well, I might not. I might just go for more governors. Yeah, I think I'll grab Liang here. and just plop her down in like Bibrax or something. Oh no, I need you to live. Jesus. Oh my god, this ca oh, okay. That barb cap is spawning cavalry. Well, I'm I'm gonna need to do something about that. I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do yet, but the fact that it's spawning cavalry is insane. I can do a lot of damage to this city now. Should be able to uh, maybe take it next turn. Yeah, I think next turn we'll have our city retaken, and that's our empire basically saved. Um let's go ahead and step you back and take this promotion. And then you step forward and combine with him. And then we'll kind of get our cavalry moving here. Well, it might be a better idea to pull you forward like that. And then we've got units coming in to save the day. I'm also just working like endless campus research grants because I'm a little bit behind in science and I need a lot of scientific great people points. Some people are making like 20 per turn passively, which is insane to me. All right, so they spawned a crossbow here, which isn't that big of a deal. Let's see if we can scooch out an extra little bit of experience on that guy. And then we'll clear the city out. Yoink, city belongs to me. I will, of course, keep it. And unfortunately, it is a little bit damaged. It lost its walls and stuff, but we'll get it back up and running in no time. On the other flip of the coin, however, we have a bit of a cavalry problem. Now, we do have units in position that might be able to help out. I think that Spearman can actually do a significant amount of damage to him, even though he's a Spearman. And we'll uh, actually combine these Musketmen together, and I'll combine these Bombards together. Trying to just limit the amount of units I have to micromanage. And if I can have more units be stronger. Why are you guys so strong? Oh my goodness. All right, combining, moving, kill him. Over here in Corteron, I 
I do want to get the Forbidden City, although I don't really have a good city to build it in. I mean, 29 turns is, is not that many, um, realistically. And if I pop it there, there's potentially good theater squares in this area. Just curious what these uh, these cavalry are going to do inside my territory. I'm wondering if they'll go for pillages and stuff. We seem to be doing fine down here. Yep, okay, thankfully. I'm going to go ahead and vote for myself three times on that one. And I will say condemn Confucianism, sure. Looks like Catholicism won that one and I won this one, which means I get an extra trade route, which is always nice. And I also have access to the University of St. Cor now. I could go for it. The AI almost never goes for it. I would need to actually build a university in this city. What does it do? Other civilizations trade with the city, plus one science, plus one gold for them. And I get plus two science for every trade route to the city. And domestic trade routes give an additional plus one faith to this city. It does give me three science of faith and two great scientist points. So this is actually a pretty good wonder. So I think I'm going to go ahead and go for it once I finish this commercial hub investment. This is the great thing about the about the Gauls. Oh, it looks like, uh, <laughs> looks like the Forbidden City was just finished. So I'm probably better that I didn't go for it. Um, do I want to go for a campus now? I feel like I'm behind on science, so campus, like, is the thing that gets me back into the game. Especially after a dark age, so we'll pop that down right there. I could, yeah, I probably want to put builders in here, but that's not a priority right now. In fact, I'll get the builder out of baggy right before I go for that university. Alright, so even more cavalry have teleported out of the fog of war to make my life a nightmare. And they even pillaged that tile as well. All right, yikers. This is this is a tough one. This is a very, very tough one. I do have some units that I can redirect, but I'll need more. It's really, really unfortunate. Let's get ancient walls in here. Provide more city shots. I don't think I can afford to go for a university right here. I think I just have to maybe get some more coursers to try and hold off this cavalry. We'll grab the university in my capital, though. Um, it's only four turns. It's a pretty good return on investment. These cities are all recovering. Although, man, it is my best city to actually build a military out of to support the north. So I think we will grab ourselves a courser in here as well. Okay, just even more cavalry has appeared out of the fog of war. Ay, caramba. Oof. I guess I'm redirecting everything up there now. Um, with the exception of the people going for Vilnius. Damn it, they built walls. Why would you guys build walls? I just wanted to recapture you. Now, all right, I guess the ex expeditionary forces that were headed to Vilnius are being cancelled. We'll play defensively. Although, in other good news, we did get the Taj Mahal, which gives me plus one error score for a bunch of different things. And that's going to help me maintain my golden ages. Uh, the good news is this cavalry did come into a really, really bad position. So we can get some serious damage on him and maybe even get a kill with my knight. Perfect, right. We got a kill. You can do significant damage. You would do, let's see, a little bit of damage. But if I upgrade you to a pike and shot, you would do a lot more. So pike and shot is uh, probably the counter unit that I actually want here. So I'll get working on those in baggy. And, well, I may as well finish the coursers because I've already started them, right? So the sunk cost fallacy or whatever. Now a couple of pike and shot will be useful. Now this guy, on the other hand, I can pull him back further with the com combination here. And now I, I think I've hemmed and hawed about it too long. I think now we just beeline industrialization to get our factories online and reveal coal and stuff. What's next for the city of Tervana? I actually don't know. I actually just do not know what I'm going to do with this city. <laughs> Theater Square doesn't make much sense to me. Encampment kind of makes sense to me, although that just makes my life harder if the city does flip independent. There is something to be said for like an encampment here. I could go for a campus. I don't think that's worth it. I think, think the encampment would give me extra housing. It would give me another military production hub. It would give me access to a bunch of stuff. I could also just go for entertainment complexes. The amenities from luxuries are quite uh, kind of spreading thin across my empire now. Like there's a couple of my cities with low amenities and this would free those up again. So that's an option. Sort of similar logic to what I did in a couple of my other cities. I don't know. I'm having a hard time making the decision here. <clears throat> I feel like the enter having entertainment complexes is nice in this mode because you'll be able to run those projects to help your other cities regain loyalty. So I'm going to pop one down. 
um, like right here, I think is fine. Just get rid of that rice. I don't need the rice. The city will be able to grow. It has plenty of food and it's already out its housing limits. So losing a rice tile isn't the end of the world. Amphitheater and Bibrex. I think we'll just go ahead and grab an archaeological museum. All right, we got issues. I can clear this with this guy, though, which works in my favor. Uh, these guys are fine. I'm worried, though, if they go for this knight, he is dead. So I'm just like hiding a lot of my units inside my defensible tiles and trying to see what we can do. In other words, farm triangle in Bibrax, giving this city the food it will need to reach its maximum potential. I think I'm going to work these two really high food tiles and then it'll be able to get up to working these really high production tiles faster. Nice, we stole the boost for flight from Quango. Let's see, steel technology two levels higher, perfect, and we can keep stealing tech here. Again, I'm curious what these cavalry are going to do. It looks like they're trying to hunt me down, but um, they're just kind of throwing themselves into my encampments, which is fantastic for me and uh, exactly the sort of result that I'm looking for. Let's get rid of this guy. Bring our pike and shot over to deal with them. Let's go ahead and steal ballistics. I think we're, I think we're, I think we're, I'm feeling very happy. Nice, we just picked up mercantilism. I can probably change my government around now that I'm in like a safe position. I don't need Rat News a professional army. I'm not upgrading units anymore. I definitely want serfdom and craftsmen. And I think there is an argument to be made for colonization because there is so much land on the map. Triangular trade is another good one. Let's see, what else? Domestic routes, but not being able to train settlers would suck. But isolationism would be amazing for me right now because all of my trade routes are internal. So an extra three food, three production. That's like 15 production and 15 food and 15 gold across my empire. Really, really powerful. Uh, trying to see here. Yeah, I don't think any of these... Um, I don't think any of these really, really do anything for me. So I think triangular trade. I think this is a reasonable, reasonable setup for things. I might even plug in retainers. For amenities but i think conscription is fine for now we're one turn away from finishing this settler and we're at seven population so we should place another district i have a decent harbor it's not amazing but it's okay i have a optimum i think we kind of want to look for maybe a luxury district like for example maybe a holy site could be an option in this particular game hmm i do have a decent campus location however so i think i should take the good campus it's always, always a good option to go for a campus. You can never go wrong. All right, we'll shoot that cavalry unit. We will move you forward. This courser can get this kill. And then this knight can get this kill. We can shoot this guy, clean him out. And now we should be able to... Oh my god, how many scouts and barbs are spawning here? I thought I was finally done cleaning up this nonsense. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right, let's have a look through the resources here. I have coffee. I have tobacco to trade. I should really be trading that. I should get jade off of Canada and incense off of Canada. So let's go ahead and talk to himself. Sell him these for these two. And I'll even throw in a little bit of nitre for you, buddy. And a little bit of iron because you seem to be lacking. You'll give me a bit of cash. We'll equalize the deal. 12 gold per turn for this trade deal. Happy days. Those extra few amenities are going to make a difference because there's a couple of my cities with minus one amenities and I want them to be on positive one. That's why I'm working on building arenas and stuff. Oh, for the love of holy Jesus Christ above, what is happening over here? Where did you come from? What? Where is our raging barbarian option? <laughs> oh, I don't need this in my life. Oh, Jesus. Retreat. I don't even know what I'm going to do with this. I, I barely have units in position. Christ on a bicycle, like just spawning units. And now Germany's like, ooh, let me have a look around your territory with my queries here. Now the good news is the skirmisher is a dumbass and he attacked my swordsman. So it'll be an easy kill. I still need to deal with this though. I don't know how I'm going to manage it. I think I can use this musketman corps. And the rest of these units have to come down south to defend after this like weird mega push from the barbarians that includes bombards for god's sake i do have a couple of pike and shot now which makes me feel a bit more confident against against cavalry and this era has at least 13 turns in it and i've got just four more era score to get so i should be able to get this can i get any really cheap techs no not really i've already filled out my tech tree it's unfortunate I just love that this musketman is built bringing a battering ram. I, I love the idea of just having these dudes in like 
18th 17th century like military equipment and then <laughs> they're carrying a battering ram uh and there's like bombard cannons like looking on it's like yep you guys can deal with the city that's it you guys break down the walls for us now i think i might actually skip the university of saint court it's a lot of build time and instead i'll focus on getting things like settlers i feel like i feel like i constantly am buying and producing new traders and they're just getting killed by something and i can't find out what it is like i've i've gone up to five trade routes multiple times um and I think it was actually the trade route from Duro Core Tehran that got murdered. God damn it. And the city of Divo Durham. Your one got murdered. Actually, no, I transferred your one, but this one got murdered. Damn it. It's so much gold in production to get one of those traders. Like, it really adds up over the course of the game if they get pillaged. Oh my god, Pike and Shot are just so good against knights. Oof. Well, let's get you to be a musketman then. Ah, oh, just dealing with constant swarms of annoying units. Right, we'll get rid of that musketman. You take a moment to heal. And we'll, uh, we'll fortify here. Got the Archaeological Museum in Bibrax, which feels pretty good to me. We'll grab a trader in here. I will want to pick up Natural History, because there's a decent amount of culture hiding in a uh, Natural History Museum. Archaeological Museum, whatever. Lovely, there's civil engineering, allowing me to build farms on grassland hills and plains hills, so I have more options for farm triangles. And I can also go ahead and plug in my favorite card, Public Works, which gives you extra builder production and extra charges on them. Let's go ahead and shoot this musket man. Use the city shot as well. I don't think I can safely get a kill without this crossbowman being annoying. Unless I do something like this. And then I feel safe when I've cleared up this map. There must be more barb camps over here as well. Ten turns until the next era. I feel confident that I'll be able to get the era score I need um, in that time. I'm not too worried about it. So I'm kind of just going for libraries and stuff. Try to pick up my science. We'll grab Moksha, even though he doesn't do much, just because he's a loyalty stick. I'm not getting caught with my pants down again, so I'm going to recruit some more bombards to defend my territory. Just on the very, very off chance that I don't actually make this Dark, dark Age. Alright, we've got seven popping Bibrax now. And again, I'm kind of running into a hard time like actually choosing what I want to do in this city. I feel like Commercial Hub is a good move. Long term. Although, you know what? Maybe I'll just Maybe I'll just go Encampment in here. Yeah, I think I like Encampment as well. There's just more bards. Where are they coming from? Leave me alone. I want to just have a peaceful game for the love of God. Oh, beautiful. We have a spy all the way up at maximum level. And I think we'll go for seduction here. That could be helpful as well. It's a nice promotion. I think, however, that is going to be it for this episode. Uh, we have managed to survive a dark age. We have achieved another golden age. And we're well on our way to uh, being behind every single AI in the game in terms of science. But, I mean, it's it's looking okay. Like, we're not we're not that, that far behind. Oh, God, he has 10 more techs than me, and he's making twice my tech per turn. It's bad. It's really bad, okay? I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye. <laughs>